Welcome back, everyone. Imagine yourself hospitalized, needing surgery, but there's no surgeon in sight. But one day, perhaps soon, that will no longer be a problem. This weekend, ABC News was invited to report on the very first FDA-approved human trial testing robotic telesurgery. In this case, a doctor in Orlando, Florida, removed prostate cancer from a patient nearly 7,000 miles away in the African country of Angola. ABC News medical correspondent Dr. Darian Sutton has the exclusive story. You guys can see us, we can see you. Well, here's the next step in the future of surgery. It's a life-saving surgery this doctor has done tens of thousands of times. It's the same as if I'm in the room. Better, actually, because I can actually see what anesthesia is doing. It's much better. Dr. Vipul Patel is the medical director of the Global Robotic Institute at Advent Health in Orlando, Florida. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. 67-year-old Fernando de Silva was diagnosed with prostate cancer three months ago. He lives in Angola, where treatment options are limited. Prostate cancer is very prevalent in Africa and especially Angola, but in the past they really haven't monitored it well or they haven't had treatments. De Silva needed advanced surgical treatment to remove his prostate cancer. This is a robotic console. It's attached to a robot, and it's attached to a robot that does surgery in patients uh, in operating rooms all over the world. De Silva agreed to be the first patient in an FDA clinical trial testing robotic surgery to be performed remotely. I've done almost 20,000 robotic prostatectomies now, and that's what we're known for here. Usually, these procedures are done with the surgeon in the room, but this time, Patel and his team were working to test whether it could be done remotely across the Atlantic Ocean in what would normally be a 14-hour flight. Unlike a typical surgery, Dr. Patel doesn't need to scrub in. Instead, he sits at a multi-million dollar machine with a three-dimensional screen and nimble controls with haptic feedback. It's about an hour and 20 minutes, which is about my standard time here. So it felt the same. You know, he's a young guy. He wanted his cancer cured. How do you communicate with your team across an ocean? We had all the cameras in both ORs. Our team, we work so much together, it's almost telepathic. So we don't say much to each other, but our team on the ground there was speaking a lot with the local team, and we could hear them. All three are set. It's the first robotic telesurgery from the U.S. to an international location since 2001. That procedure, famously called the Lindbergh Operation, named after the first person who flew across the Atlantic from America to Europe. It was a different robotic system. It was different telecom, and the procedure was successful but it wasn't really reproduced for this whole time, two decades later. And the reason is the robots weren't quite compatible, the telecom was still slow, everything hadn't come together yet. Now, with advancements in technology, engineers have been able to curtail many of the issues that can come up during a complex procedure from a distance. How does it look? How are the images and audio video? Perfect. I think we should do five more today. Yeah, I mean, 11,000 kilometers away, it feels pretty good. 25 years after that Lindbergh operation, Dr. Patel's surgical team used a direct fiber optic network. That's a total distance of about 10,000 miles. We're using direct fiber from Orlando to Miami, Miami down to Fortaleza and Brazil and across the ocean to Luanda and Angola. And so you see the distance 17,000 kilometers. Throughout the procedure, it was about 140 milliseconds stable so there was no perceptible delay in my brain. The delay is so short that it's not noticeable by the brain. Exactly, it's not perceptible. I always have my team where the patient is. So in case something happened with telecom, which can, I'm sure, the team would just take over and finish the case and, and do it safely. The first FDA-approved remote surgery was a success. All right, why don't you switch it over and then let's sew this back. First ever prostate removed from the United States to Africa. So at least we've done that part. Now we have to put it all back together. And now Dr. Patel plans to do more. In terms of the clinical trial and the FDA approval, what other steps will happen after this? Well, I think we have to do more cases with the trial, and then we will present the data back to the FDA. I think that what they're looking for is safety. 
and redundancy and reliability and, and making sure the patients did fine. And, and that's our interest too. We talked about treating prostate cancer today. What are some other examples where this type of technology can be used to help people? I think the most uh, needs-based uh, case would be telestroke and cardiac. Those are the two where people die quickly in a short period of time. And so if we could do remote stroke surgery, remote cardiac stenting, clot removals, you would save huge amount of lives. Emergency room physicians will have technology that can be remotely accessible to surgeons, maybe even in the ambulance where people can can get remote interventions if they can't make it to the hospital. So this is where telesurgery will really have an impact on a broader level. All right. The implications here are far-reaching. Our thanks to Dr. Darian Sutton for that. Coming up, actors Carrie Coon and Morgan Spector are a social climbing dynamic due on HBO's The Gilded Age.